Ukrainian vampire drones equipped with infrared cameras have become the nightmare of Russians on the front lines. These drones are capable of operating effectively at night, hitting both stationary and moving targets. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication's analyst, David Axe, focuses on how a UAV from the Nemesis Group recently successfully hit a moving tank at night. The expert notes that at the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, most drones had only daylight cameras, making them ineffective at night. However, Ukraine has recently begun deploying UAVs equipped with infrared cameras as showering Russian positions with dozens of grenades blowing up their fortifications and vehicles. These drones wreaked havoc on Russian troops who are used to feeling safe at night. At first, the vampire drone raids were aimed primarily at stationary targets, but as Ukrainian UAV operators gained experience, they began to destroy targets as they moved. Our pilots demonstrated the highest level of skill, the Ukrainian military's drone branch boasted. The drone's third grenade missed, but it didn't matter. The damaged tank veered off the road. Its three crew clambered out from under the vehicle's punctured metal shell and scurried away. Mikhailo Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation, said the country's drones fundamentally changed the situation on the battlefield. Fedorov predicted the separate unmanned system forces would accelerate technological advancements. Night capability is one of the branch's priorities. Early in the wider war, most drones were strictly equipped with daylight cameras and were ineffective at night. Late last year, the Ukrainians began deploying so-called vampire drones fitted with infrared cameras, giving the soon-to-be independent military drone groups their first true nighttime capability. Analysts add that such drones attack the target from above, so artificial intelligence for targeting is less useful here. That is why the skill of the operator in controlling the vampire drone plays a decisive role. The vampire drones wreaked havoc on unprepared Russian troops who had come to equate darkness with protection. Dropping grenades by the dozen, the drones blew up parked vehicles and wrecked fortifications. The Russians called the night drones Baba Yagas, after a forest witch from Slavic folklore. A vampire drone might weigh up to 40 pounds and cost more than $10,000. Instead of flying into the targets like an inexpensive FPV does, a vampire drone bombs it from overhead. The Ukrainian armed forces managed to almost completely neutralize the threat from Russian FPV drones using electronic warfare systems. This fact was sadly acknowledged by Russian propagandist Alexei Chadayev on air at Komsomolskaya Pravda radio station. He argues that the Ukrainian armed forces have an advantage not in the number of FPV strike drones, but in their use. Less than 5% of Russian UAVs reach their target. If we take such a narrow tactical sphere as disposable FPV kamikazes, then they are comparable. Only those that we have are effectively jammed by their electronic warfare. I cited statistics. 160 launched and 5 hits on target, 50 near the target, the rest were shot down by electronic warfare. Chadayev complained. Such vulnerability of Russian FPV drones to electronic warfare systems is the result of the inflexibility of the Russian military-industrial complex. The complex is not able to modernize its weapons quickly enough, adapting to the situation on the battlefield. Recall the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine is often referred to as the world's first large-scale drone war. But far the most prevalent type of drone on the Ukrainian battlefield is the first-person view drone, a type that our company sells in Ukraine and elsewhere. Despite their relatively low cost compared to other aerial platforms, FPV drones possess a number of capabilities that have resulted in a dramatic shift in our understanding of modern warfare. Given their navigation capabilities, these drones have become the preferred platform for mounting explosives and executing targeted strikes. Originally emerging from the realm of civilian hobby drone racing, FPV drones have robust motors and frames that are built to withstand the rigors of high-speed races and multiple crashes. Relative to their fixed-wing cousins, copter-type drones have greater maneuvering capabilities which, in the hands of skilled pilots, convert into precision targeting unique to FPV drones. It is uncommon for pilots to fly their drones through the window of a building or into the open hatch of an armored vehicle unleashing an explosion on exposed personnel inside. 
FPV drones are also well suited for targeting specific equipment like optics, radars and antennas mounted on the exteriors of armoured vehicles. A resident of Kherson has posted a video cut from enemy UAVs over a short period of time showing how the Russian military is hunting civilians in Kherson. The video was posted on Facebook by Yuri Antoshchuk, a new media trainer and expert on information and communication internet technologies. Here is a cut of video from enemy UAVs in a short period of time how the occupiers are hunting civilians in Kherson. Antoshchuk wrote, According to him, dozens of explosives are being dropped on ordinary people cars, cyclists, minibuses, ambulances, firefighters and volunteers on a daily basis. Kersonets noted that these are not isolated incidents. It is already commonplace. Just like people drink coffee, tea every day, the Russians are deliberately hunting ordinary people in the city. The morning begins and Russian drones fly out to hunt. The animals are training on Kherson residents, and Toshchuk wrote. He explained that the Russian military invented a story and told themselves that any vehicle in Kherson is their legitimate target. And Toshchuk said that on some streets you won't see a single car in a day. The Russian occupiers attack every car that comes into their sight. And if they don't like the appearance of a passerby, they can also drop explosives on him. Well, they will justify any of their crimes with the phrase, legitimate target, he said. He also reminded that when the leaves fall, the Russians additionally remotely mine the streets. They scatter anti-personnel mines from UAVs, which can easily tear off a foot if you step on them. These mines are difficult to spot in the foliage and are targeting older people in particular. And Toshchuk also noted that in some villages near Kherson, it is impossible to drive in and out because all roads, landings and fields are sown with mines. In Kherson, the streets and roads are also being covered with mines. He added that the Russians write in their propaganda publications that we should also take care of ATMs and shops to force civilians to leave. But as Antoshchuk emphasizes, despite all this, dozens of projects are being planned and implemented in Kherson and other frontline communities in the region. People continue to work. As Ukraine Form previously reported, video evidence of another war crime by the Russian army was shown in Kherson. Russian drones hunting civilians.